please go to correctingmechanics.com and download your free ebook. We also have a body and balance membership based program and walk you through step by step on fixing your specific ailments and imbalances. Hey everybody, Brian Meadows from correctingmechanics.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about your, your knees and a condition called knee vulgus. And what knee vulgus is, is when your knees move inward towards each other. Some people might call it knock knee. But it, and that is when the knees come in. So from your hips down to your knees, your femur is actually more significantly aimed in towards the center of your body. And then the shins or the tibia is actually going back out the, the opposite direction. So you kind of have this zigzag going on at, and uh, the knees being in the middle point of that. But just because the knees look like they're having the problem, which they are, also may indicate that you're having additional problems in the hips and down in the ankles. And in some cases, people that have had vulgus knee situation for a long time will experience more pain in the hips, the knees, and the ankles, and in some cases, the lumbar region, the lower back. Now, the effects of having knee vulgus is flattened feet, because when your knees are in, your feet tend to pronate, so they roll over on the inside, just like I'm demonstrating here. And that will flatten out your arches, and therefore you might get plantar fasciitis. Uh, secondly, moving up the chain here to the knees, your femur on top of your tibial and that joint where the, the knee, your femur on the outside is going to rub on the meniscus on off of the top of the tibia, and it's un abnormally, so it's really rubbing hard and it's going to wear that meniscus out much, much more uh, quickly. And you're going to have a lot of uh, pain in the knees, uh, typically up on the front side, but a lot on the, out, on the outer side of your knee. And eventually that could lead to more arthritic conditions. Now, finally, moving up the chain further, we're talking the hips. Again, we're now in a more pronounced uh, angle towards the center of the body, that's putting some inward rotation on your femur, which is pulling your hip uh, joint out a little bit more. Like if you watch my elbows, they're moving forward like this. So that's putting a strain on your muscles in the back. Probably a lot of the piriformis is being uh, worked a little bit more, but also your psoas that, that connects to your lumbar region to the front of your femur at the joint is also uh, being uh, worked more there as well. And so those that muscles tighten, it's gonna cause you some lower back pain. So some of the reasons why this is happening is because we have some muscles that are overactive and tight as compared to some of the other muscles that they're dominating, which have become weak and inactive. So. Those muscles that are mainly involved that need some attention are the gastrocnemius and soleus in our calves. So they really become tight and you can't get enough flexion in your ankles. Um, also your adductors, so if you think about that, that's the muscles on the inside of your leg and obviously if they're tight, they're pulling your knees in. So a very keen clue there. Um, also your TFL, and, which is your tensor fastener latte, uh, muscle that it connects from up, up up on the hip and it actually um, also influences the IT band so it's all the way down the side and connects down below the knee. And then your biceps femoris which is also known as your hamstring muscles. So those have become really tight. And then in some cases like I mentioned earlier your psoas muscle that from your lumbar region to the front of your femur joints there at the hip. So they can be tight too, and that'll cause some of that lower back pain and pulling your, your lumbar spine forward. Now, um, this is all about stretching. This video is about stretching these particular muscles to help lengthen them and loosen them up. But to really correct a knee vulgus condition and a movement syndrome is to go through a program that incorporates several techniques 
much like the Body and Balance Program does. And that allows you not only to address the overactive muscles and doing more than just stretching that I'm gonna demonstrate here, though this, this is a good preventative, um, but also a good release just for a while, but you gotta keep doing this but also to look, focus on the opposite muscles, the antagonist muscles that have been underactive and have uh, become weak. So we focus on those and get them stronger and then make the body work together properly, synergistically and in balance so that you can get those legs to straighten out more, reduce the amount of pain and, and hopefully avoid any kind of arthritic problems from all the bad angles and the rubbing of all the different joints. When we stretch these muscles, you basically want to go in the opposite action of what its concentric action is. So if they're to bring your legs in towards your center of your body, then in order to stretch them, we want to extend them outward and get a good pull on those muscles. So in this image I'm showing you, I've got my left foot out to the side and I'm putting my weight over on my right thigh. I've got that leg bent for stability and holding my, my knee for some extra stability. But my left leg is at the adductor muscles on the inside of my upper thigh or the ones that are being stretched here. For another example, stretching my right leg and the adductor muscles, I can go down a little bit further to a point where you're feeling a good stretch. You can tell it's pulling, but it's not totally uncomfortable, so uncomfortable that it's painful. And you want to, again, stretching minimum of 30 seconds. That gives the muscle enough time of, to think about what, it's, what you're asking it to do, which is to lengthen and relax. Now, if doing this just from standing up and putting your hands on your knee is maybe still a challenge for your stability, you can use a Swiss ball. And you can basically sit on the front of the Swiss ball and do the same motion. Stretching the calf muscles is actually fairly simple. I really like doing this one because I have a lot of tightness in my calves. If I don't warm, uh, warm them up and stretch them good beforehand, I can expect some pretty bad cramps. But uh, th this is a fairly easy stretch though, and it doesn't take a lot to get it done. Um, so just using a wall, I, I hold, you know, for holding myself up, but also pushing through my hands and down into my heel, I can stretch my gastrocnemius really well. So this first image here is all about the gastrocnemius where that's gonna be your foot behind you. You're gonna push back into your heel, pushing it down onto the ground. So you wanna get that nice leg straight and, and, and pulling on that gastrocnemius, which is the muscle on the back. And if you wanna hit it a little bit harder, you can imagine pulling up your toes back towards your shin while you're in this stretched position, activating your, your tib anterior tibialis muscles because muscles work antagonist to each other on opposite sides of a joint. So if you're lifting up your toes, then that means your gastrocnemius has to relax because your gastrocnemius really wants to lift up your heel. So you're, if you activate your anterior tibialis, it forces the muscles on the backside of your calves to try and relax. So it's just a little extra tip and trick to get a little bit more, you know, stretch, inhibiting and stretching at the same time. Now this next pose is fairly close to working gastrocnemius. This is more focused on the soleus muscle. Instead of extending our leg out behind us, we're kind of just keeping it here, bending our knee. So we're really hitting that Achilles tendon, trying to keep our heel on the ground, bending the knee you'll feel it, it feels a lot different than the other stretch of the gastroc. This soleus muscle is, lays underneath your gastrocnemius, but you still need to get it in the same way. And again, you can use that inhibition trick of trying to lift up your toes in front of you. Again, like all stretching, hold for 30 seconds or longer, and don't forget to do the opposite leg. Okay, so we've identified that we have some tight muscles in the back of our legs. To be more concise, our hamstrings. We do have a basic hamstring stretch, but there's also the bicep femoris that we're going to focus on. First off is the hamstring stretch. It's the static supine hamstring stretch. 
lay down on flat on your back with one leg up in the air, the other one extended out in front of you on the floor. Hold your leg behind the knee, just below the knee, and gently pull towards you. Try to keep your leg as straight as you possibly can. And you'll know, pull that leg towards your chest until you get to a point of a little bit of discomfort. So, you know, you like always, we don't want to go beyond and be in total pain that we end up tightening our muscles because we're trying to fight that because it hurts. We just want to get to a little bit of point of discomfort because that's where you're getting to the point of tension where your muscles are tight. And gradually over time, you can work a little bit further and further and as you get loose. Hold that for 30 seconds or longer until it starts to feel less uncomfortable for you, and less pain. Then we're going to switch legs, drop down that leg, lift up the other one, and do the exact same thing again, repeating for 30 seconds. Now the next stretch I'm going to show you is the static supine biceps femoris stretch. And this one hits that biceps femoris a little bit more targeted, almost the same thing as the hamstring stretch, but we're going to take the leg a little bit over the center line, over to the opposite side. I'm not going to let it drop down onto the floor. We're going to keep it up in the air. And again, we're going to take our hands and we're going to keep that leg pulled in towards our chest again and try and keep your leg as straight as possible. And it's not easy, especially if you have tight hamstrings and tight bicep femoris muscles. Again, 30 seconds or longer. Switch legs to the opposite side. And then here's a variation of doing that same stretch for the bicep femoris where we're using a bench. You're going to put one leg up onto the bench and you're going to twist in the opposite direction. So your upper body is going the opposite direction than what your foot is. So you, you intentionally want to have your foot cross over your other foot. So as you can see, I'm taking my right foot. It's on the bench, but it's across the center line of my body to the left of my foot. And then I'm taking my upper torso and twisting to the right. And that twisting action is what helps target that bicep femoris a little bit more. Like any other stretch that's even on the floor, you're holding this for 30 seconds or longer. And, and it, depending on your capability, if you need to be on the floor only, then just do the floor ones by all means. But you can also do this one standing up if getting onto the floor is a little bit harder for you, depending on your capability. As you get along in your body imbalance program, you'll be able to do some of these more alternative methods of doing this stretch. This one works a little bit on your proprioception because you're standing on one leg, other leg on the bench, and you're twisting. So it's working that sense of balance at the same time, which is also necessary as we continue through life. You need to keep your balance. Now, you can also do an, a regular hamstring stretch where instead of twisting and putting your leg uh, across the other one, you would put your left foot up on the bench and just reach over towards your toes of that foot that's on the bench. And now you're just stretching right over top of that leg, which is focusing on the, the rest of the hamstring stretch. So that's an alternative standing stretch as opposed to being lying down on your back. Again, like always, Hold for 30 seconds or longer. That's the science behind everything to, to make your muscles learn to relax and gets a signal to start to let go and let it stretch and lengthen. So the stretch that we're going to perform is called a hip flexor stretch. What I'm demonstrating here is a kneeling hip flexor stretch. I'm doing this in a balanced position, so I'm also getting some proprioception going here. But essentially what you want to do is separate your legs, one leg in front of the other, one down on your knee and the other one with your knee flexed in front of you. And you're really of concentrating on that leg that's behind you where your knee is on the ground. You want to lean forward with your lower body, so just kind of angling over your ankle in the front there just a little bit, and then leaning back with your upper body. So that's going to put, in this case, I'm showing a right leg of my hip flexor, it's going to really kind of put it in a bowed situation. So we're opening up the angle more than 180 degrees. Now you don't want to, you want to do it just to a point where you start to feel stretch. If it's, this is even going to this angle that I'm demonstrating here is too much um, strain or pain. You want to back that off. So we want to just, we want to slowly lengthen this and get our body used to it. So you may have to just start off in a position where you're just 
without leaning backwards with your upper torso and just gradually build up that stretch but you want to do this every day at the end of the day um, especially a long day of sitting most stretches need to be done in a static mode for about 30 seconds now if you need some additional balance you can do this alternatively by holding on to something that's very stable like in this demonstration here what you can do is then lift up your right hand uh, or at least the hand that's on the same side of the leg that you're stretching or the, the hip flexors that you're stretching and what that does is expands and lifts your upper torso a little bit more so you're separating your hip complex your upper torso from your femur and your upper thigh so by lifting your arm you kind of lifting that rib cage and stretching up a little bit more you're pulling some of your your stabilizer muscles up with you and if that's not enough then you can do a little bit of a lean and twist over the opposite side of what your stretch is and that lean pulls that muscle a little bit further and in some cases you might do this to experience more of a stretch on the outside where the sartorius and the tfl uh, if you're leaning out a little bit more over your opposite side now certainly you can do this from a standing position too if you really have reduced mobility and range of motion it's probably better to do it from a standing position that you don't get have to get down on the ground and have to get back up again which is perfectly fine same concept here one leg in front of the other in this case both feet are on the floor no knees on the floor because you're standing you can even hold on to the wall if you need some extra stability leaning forward just a little bit by bending your front leg your knee just a bit and then leaning backwards with your upper torso until you get that nice little bit of a stretch again you'll want to hold this for 30 seconds and then don't forget to do the opposite side Hey, if you like this video, do me a favor and put a comment down below and even subscribe or hit that like button. And if you subscribe, hit the alert bell to, so you don't miss another video that I put out. But even more so, I'd appreciate it if you go to correctmechanics.com and check out some other videos and tips and tricks that we have. And I also have available for you a free ebook that shows how the whole process of corrective exercise works. Until next time, take care.